those film chips are quite capable of crippling a camera like this. They get loose, they fall into some inconvenient spot and then nothing will work. And if you don't spot them when you're taking the camera apart, you're left wondering what, what would cause the problem. I'm going to move that, remove that meter cord now. You can see someone's had that off there before. That was held in place with a bit of lacquer, it was locked into there. But it wasn't locked all that well because we've just pulled it out. Here, there's a little, a small screw here, which stops that cord from falling off the pulleys. Let's unhook this spring while we're here. It's better to take the tension off it. And there's a drum at the base. This is what couples to the shutter and to the aperture and uh, shutter speed settings. That cord, I'll inspect that. It, looks, it feels a little bit stiff. Um, frequently they're, they're good to go, even though they might be 50 or 60 years old. They're often good enough. Okay, looking at the body, what else do I want now? We can carry on taking the film advance apart. That uh, lacquer that somebody popped on there, that's just causing a nuisance here now. Okay, that's that piece. Then here, let's move this around. Oh, that film advance is exceptionally sticky. There's a tiny little spring in here. I'll zoom you in so you can see it. Nice. Okay, the tiny spring here. Of course, I've got to find it now. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, did I flick the other piece away with it? I did too, back shortly. Fortunately, the pieces didn't get far, so I'll put those carefully away. That little dog is quite important, that little drive dog. Right, back to things at a normal scale. Let's get this apart. This is quite gummy, it's uh, dried grease is the enemy here. And this is well overdue for a service. It's no wonder the film advance was a little bit stiff. I'll just recover the spring from the top of this lever. Old cameras are filled with a surprising mixture of screws that are too tight and screws that are too loose. You never know what you're going to find. Right, rewind button. Let's have that off. Oh, that is very, very tight. That doesn't want to unscrew, so I'll just shove my scalpel handle down the back of that to stop that rocket from turning. Instead of my thumb, my thumb is usually a good indication of how tight things are. Now I've got a sore thumb. Right, the spring to one side, the button and the washer somewhere else. The screw through here that drives the sprocket from the sprocket shaft, we'll have that out.
And while I'm working on this, more film chips are falling out. Well, that was the uh, Bosch from the Film Advance. And here's the clutch. Take out the shaft from the sprocket. Put the sprocket to one side. The film advance shaft here. Just rotate this so I can see the fixing screws. This is very sticky. That's just grease that's hardened up and dried up. I'll remove this lever because it's causing it's in my way. The springs I never put through the ultrasonic cleaner. It's like you do end up getting damaged or, or lost. We get this lever out from in here. That's the third screw we want out. Is that going to lift out? That's just stuck. Okay. So there's our shaft. Now you can see that. I'll zoom you in a bit. I'll zoom you in so you can see the full horror of this nasty thick grease. There you go. That's a bit better. Look at the state of that. All that thick stuff there, that's dry, that's like concrete. That's no longer acting much like a lubricant. And those pieces will certainly need to go into the degreaser. Our sprocket can come out now, I mean our take up spool, that's pretty greasy. And in the base of the camera here, you can see a lot of, there's a bit of dust and grit, and there's more film chips. Now the mirror, the mirror is not wonderful, but it's pretty good. Some of these mirrors are glued onto their seat. I'm just checking. Yeah, it appears that it is. So that, that can stay where it is. I'll zoom you back out. You're seeing nothing. This mirror appears to be glued to its plate there, so I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. I'm not going to fight with that. Um, fighting with that is likely to lead to a uh, mirror with a great big crack down the middle of it. frame counter here. Let's see if it moves nicely. Counts up. It's got a spring to return it when you open the door and it, that returns nicely. That's reasonably tidy there. Look, here's another film chip. Look at that. They're all the way through this camera. Yeah, I'm not going to muck with that counter. That appears to work nicely. Okay, so the body casting now, I need to clean this. Here's another piece of film. That one's been chopped up. That's only a little bit. If it's been chopped up, it's been chopped up by the gears. So that means that's been in through the film advance and been chopped up by the gears. There's something here too, where this comes through. That's the, the lever that senses the back door. Senses the door's closed. There's something stuck under that. And well, what do you think it might be? Another film chip. There's another bit of it there.
Okay, well the body will have to be cleaned up. I need to get rid of all the old grease and stuff that's in the body in places like that. Come on video camera, hurry up and focus. Anything in here, any old grease needs to be gone. I need to be sure that these levers move smoothly and freely. They appear to. I don't think they need to be disturbed. They're always entertaining. All this rubbish on here under the leatherettes, that's all going to come off back to clean metal. Looking at the back of the camera, the leatherette appears to be good. It appears to be stuck firmly. We won't be messing with the leatherette on the back of the camera. More film chips. I think they're breeding in here somewhere. There's another one. They're everywhere. Okay, so we've got an infestation of film chips. Apart from that, this just needs to be cleaned out. I want to see if I can do something about that mess inside the back there. I think it's adhesive from a label. It looks like it's got some printing on it. It was probably a water slide transfer. It might have been a sticky label. Whatever it is, it's sort of given up the ghost and just looks really ugly now. So I've got to clean this stuff up. I've got to put this stuff through the ultrasonic cleaner. It's got to be done in solvent to get rid of all that grease, break that crap down, get it, get it gone. And then it's got to be done in a very strong domestic detergent. And after it's been all rinsed and dried off nicely, those parts will look shinier than they've ever looked before in their lives. Well, here we have the body all cleaned up and ready to go. So that's ready for the reassembly process. You hear a buzzing noise in the background, that's the ultrasonic cleaner. As you can see, this has been cleaned out inside as well. The remains of all that adhesive from that label are long gone. So this is ready for the reassembly, this part at least. And uh, I'll get the body cleaned and reassembled, and then we'll move on to the shutter. Well, summer's been and gone, and it's a dismal day today. But let's get this camera back in the back reassembled and going. So first off, I just want to put the tripod socket back on. Otherwise, every time I hit the body down on the bench top, the back door flies open, which it's very really tedious after a while. Well, we're still in the picture, only just. Make sure you get these three screws the right way round. The post is the single screw at the back of the camera. And that post supports the tripod socket surround, which has a hole in it, which locates on that pin to make this very difficult to rotate accidentally or on purpose. Okay, so I'll just check those screws are tight. That's good to go. I can start getting this film uh, advance mechanism assembled into the camera now. And these are the pieces we need. I'll lubricate this with some graphite grease. Now it used to be fairly easy to get graphite grease many years ago but lately it seems to have been superseded by various other magic concoctions and when you do get graphite grease it's not necessarily of a useful consistency 
last one I was previously using was better than this, so this one's okay. And making sure it gets down between the the bush and the shaft, because that's the area we want lubricated. Run some into that spring so that the coils will run over each other nice and smoothly. And the cam surface is on there where it interacts with the uh, release lever I usually lubricate those with some um, synthetic grease which is somewhat less messy to deal with so taking the camera body I'll drop the film spool in place round hole to the bottom slotted hole to the top and if I hold back the release lever making sure that spring's not wedged in against the body that should drop down in there and at that point there is all the holes are lined up now that's actually your start position with that release lever sitting in that position, this tab sitting in here. We want more, normally you, with a retina you would give that one full turn of tension before you fitted the lever and the cocking rack at the top. We want more than that, we want a, a turn and a third, so I'm going to rotate this a third of a turn. And fit it there and that'll mean when I crank one and a third turns of tension on there it'll all be lined up these three screws are the same size as the screws that hold the chrome trim plate on the base of the camera but these ones aren't rusty and don't have adhesive stuck to them. So they're the clean ones. Right, so if we hold back that lock lever, from there we'd give it one full turn of advance and that would be ready to go. I'm going to assemble the top part of that film advance next, which means First of all, I've got to deal with the clutch. So we want the clutch and this I'm also going to want to lubricate with graphite grease. One of the one of the uh, pop things about this particular grease is it's quite tacky, it sticks to the surfaces quite well and doesn't get pushed out. Okay, taking the centre part, put the spring on there, there's a little notch in that centre part and there's a little tab on the spring, that tab has to drop into that notch. Taking a pair of crimp lug pliers, I can hold that in Rotate that like that, slide the outer piece over the top, pop it down into place and check the action. That's nice and smooth, it'll be smoother in one direction than the other, that's entirely normal. I'll put a smear of synthetic grease down the centre, bring back the camera body, drop it in at the top. Whoops, that dropped straight down. Something wasn't right. Why didn't you tell me I'd put the film's film spool on the wrong side? Oh well. Back where we were. I'll just get these screws out. Put the film spool back in the right place. Right, back where we started. Squeeze, 
squeeze some grease into this gear pinion set. I wipe of synthetic grease through there and drop this upper bush for the film advance in place. Sometimes it's useful to roll the take up spool with your thumb to engage the gear. This time it fell into place nicely. No arguments. A plain screw on this side. On earlier retinas, anything other than the reflex is pretty much. There's a post there to guide the cocking rack, but not on the reflexes. That bush goes in place, plain side up. That little ratchet pull goes in place. And this screw, shouldered screw, so I'll just put a wipe of grease around that. That pull needs to be free to revolve around that shouldered screw. Check that it is. Yep, yeah, is good. Tighten those two screws up. And there's a spring. It goes on top of that screw and that acts to push that pull towards the centre. Yep, that's all in place. Now I can start assembling the gears from the top. So I'm using some synthetic grease here. And it's through underneath that piece. That should rotate and if I rotate that anti-clockwise it should push the pawl out of the way. It did. Let's just check where our advanced shaft is. Yeah, that's sitting in the neutral position pretty much. Why is that not wanting to rotate? I wasn't sitting down square. Okay. There's something not quite happening there. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. Is there something in that gear? Or in this pinion. Let's just check the action of that. that pinion rolls smoothly. I look at this gear. There's something there. What's that? Something. sure what that was. Let's see. Well that's what it was. Whatever that tiny thing was that came off of my fingertip it was a foreign body of some sort and it was causing problems. Basically it was jamming up in between the teeth. Let's get this round to the start position. That's there. Yeah. We want this piece We want this little pawl that had done such a marvellous job of trying to escape when I took the camera apart. And its spring They're sitting in place. Look, it didn't even try and run away. The cover. The gear.
and the screw from the top of the film advance. Now there's no lock lever on the bottom of this, so if I start tightening that up without holding it at the bottom, it's going to go badly for me. So I'm sacrificing my finger to hold that uh, film advance shaft in place. Right, I've done that up. So that part's done. You can check that it revolves smoothly. It does. And if you turn the shaft, that little pawl in there will pick up the gear and drive everything from the bottom. Okay, so far so good. What do I want next? Oh, I think the sprocket shaft next. I've got the lock lever here for the rewind button. Put a wipe of molybdenum paste on the round end of that. That's where it gets shifted by the film advance lever. Put its return spring in place. It's held in place with a shoulder screw. And the spring revolves around one shoulder of the screw and the lever revolves around the other shoulder. You need to make sure that it's free to move, that you didn't trap anything underneath the screw. That looks good. Now we've got to hook that spring into position. Like that. The back of the camera. We've got our film sprocket slot side up. And the shaft. I wipe some synthetic grease on the top where it runs through the casting. At the bottom where it runs through the casting. And usually a little touch on the top of the gear at the top there. That should slide down through there, holding it with my finger, I can flip the camera over, pull back that lever, that'll allow that shaft to come right through. I'll get the camera back down on the table, revolve the spool until the screw hole lines up there with the slot in the spr sprocket. Get that screw in place. Sometimes these go in without a fight, like that. Other times they won't. Usually if you revolve that shaft 180 degrees you'll find that access from the other side is easier. Just to do with the uh, amount of countersink on the hole I'd imagine. Right, so we want our rewind button, the washer, and it's return spring. So I'll put some synthetic grease in that spring. Put that on the button. Put the washer on the top. This washer's funny, it's not dead flat. It's got a bit of a dish shape to it. I'm not sure why that is. It might mean that it was not put on properly. Um, though typically you'd snap the end off the button before you would be able to distort that washer. So we'll say it's something to do with the manufacturing process at the button factory, at the spring washer, washer factory and perhaps they had a a blunt punch or something. Anyway, so that's in. That's working. The, we press that in, it lock, locks in place. We pull back the lever, pops back up. So that part's good. At the base of the camera, well, I need to close this up because we're not going any further without it closed up at this stage. 
So we need to start putting a few things in place. I need to crank another full turn of tension on this. I'm holding back that release lever. It's, it's going to just jump on me, I can just tell. Uh, yeah, okay. Do this bit piecemeal then. Put that spring in there. That's for the capping plate. This spring for our frame counter, I'll just get that tucked down in position. We have our lever for the frame counter. This has to hook, that little hook has to catch that spring. Put a little touch of synthetic grease in there on the underside of this. Put some on that uh, blade too. Which way does it go? That way. And I've got to get a wind of tension on that shaft and get everything in place. 